We live in a world that is determined to push Yeshua to the limits of his patience. And that level of sin, rebellion, mockery, is close to hitting the boundary points which were established before man was created. You know, he only took so much out of the Israelites when he took them out of Israel or out of Egypt and was bringing them to the land of Israel. And they tested him ten times and he says, that's it. You're dying here. Like you want it? You're dying here. Well, the world has done the same thing. As it was in the days of Noah, so it is now at the end of this age. See, in Genesis 6, verse 5, then Yeshua examined mankind's heart and saw that wickedness, selfishness, and the quest for pleasure totally occupied the heart of man. And that's exactly what we have now. And man became defiant, rebellious. And this defiance and rebellion was so great on the earth that Yeshua had to step in and put an end to mankind because they wouldn't repent. And that every intent cherished in his heart was only intent on evil. And that's what we see. We don't see people trying to be good nowadays. <laughs> they try to be evil. Because they consider evil as good and good as evil. That's similar to what was said. I think it's in Isaiah. But Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. <clears throat> you know, when you have this quest for evil as, as though it's your guide in life, there's only one thing that can be done to help you. Eliminate you. That's all that can be done. Here you shoot... Uh, uh, <coughs> sees the evil and prepares to curse mankind and cleanse the earth. So we see in uh, Genesis 6, 11, now the earth was corrupt in a sexual free-for-all in the sight of the eternal God. And the earth was filled with anger, rage, violence, Lust and witchcraft. Verse 12. And God looked on the earth, and behold, it was full of contempt for all the things of God. For all flesh had corrupted, polluted itself, and become unclean in their way upon the earth. That's quite serious. Because we see that today. And this love for money is just overpowering the world. They think it's their God. Oh, well, they know it's their God, and they think it's, it's going to give them immortality, the amount of money that they can have. Mankind have become a death curse to the earth and upon the earth. Do you understand what that means? He was, because the wages of sin is death, if he didn't, if God didn't wipe out mankind, the whole earth would have to die, been, been totally destroyed out of existence. But he had plans for the earth, and Satan knew it, and so 
he's got to do things in a way that... Now, he said that all flesh that breathes air on the earth would have to die. Thus, a judgment comes that cannot be stopped. Once Yeshua has spoken it into existence, it cannot be stopped. It must come to pass. When we take the concepts of Genesis 6 into the time of Abram, we see Yeshua send Abram from the corruption of his home on a trip of growth and purification. So he went through all sorts of things on, the, on his trip to actually learn to have faith in God. Trust him. And, th and that was come to him as righteousness. As Abraham obeyed, we see in Genesis 12, 2, a promise was issued. And it is, verse 2, And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing to all nations. Verse 3. I will bless those that... All those who bless you. I will bless. And to those who curse you, block you, slander you, uh, put debts upon you, corrupt you, or divert you, those I will curse and destroy. And because of you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Basically in this kingdom. Because we are ambassadors of the kingdom, bringing the kingdom to earth. These scriptures set out a need to sow blessings in order to be blessed. Do you understand that? The blessing blocks the curses. So if you're blessing others, it blocks the curses from binding upon you. And causes Yeshua to act on your behalf or our behalf and bring justice into every area that has been cursed by the world. Every area. It doesn't matter whether it's your health, your body, whether it's your finances, your home, or the sale of your home. Whatever has been cursed, he can break it by you issuing blessings. Remember in Psalm 105, verse 14, 15, Yeshua permitted no man to oppress them and he reproved kings for their sake. Verse 15. Do not touch, which is curse or hinder, my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm, ever. Now, this is our promise of action by Yeshua, as defender, as restorer, to provide us with justice. So we have to use it wisely. Because if we move in injustice, we bring in 
a lack of that protection. We have to be seeking justice in things. You know, blessed are those that sigh and cry over the evil in the earth. But where it says, do not touch or curse or hinder my anointed ones. Is there anyone here that is not anointed? So if there is an enemy that rises up against you, Preventing something from happening to your favor. Preventing you from walking. He is cursed. Because he's doing you harm. Even if somebody speaks words against you. Like speaks out curses or condemnation or innuendos and all that sort of stuff. They come under that curse from God. What they sow, they're going to reap a hundredfold. You cannot raise your hand against the anointed. Even if you don't like the current administration in his assemblies, you don't speak against them. You bless them, but you don't speak against them. Because as soon as you speak against them, that curse lands on you. Whatever person you wish you Whatever you do on that nature comes upon you. And David knew that was Saul, right? What's this? David knew that was Saul. He didn't curse them. He didn't, yeah, he because he was the anointed. Yeah. Yes. And he kept him in that position. Yeah. He would not touch the anointed. Yeah. And even when he just cut a... a him off a garment, a little patch off the garment. He immediately apologized for that and, and asked forgiveness. Because he knew that a curse would come upon him for doing that. But then it says, and do my prophets no harm, ever. Now, in today's world, they think it's a cool thing to go condemning prophets. Whether of God or of Satan, they will think it's a real cool thing to speak out against them. To raise their voice, to hack, uh, heckle them to uh, things, you know, like make them discouraged from doing the work. But he specifically says, do my prophets no harm. Every time there's a condemnation or an accusation or an innuendo or an undermining, you're doing harm. It will block your blessings from manifesting. It's the same thing as trying to use dirty dish water to run your car. Will it work? No. But you've done it harm. <clears throat> and it's going to cost you big to get it fixed. Right. So what do we get in the summary of Genesis 12, 2, 3? The curses from the world are set to bring blockage. And all blockages can be from unjust laws, unjust rules and regulations, um, from governments, agencies, commissions, judges, associations, police, insurance companies, banks, 
any unjust balance or measure receives the curse from God. So if it's against the anointed, that's what you have to take in. Yeah. If you claim you're anointed and you're accepting unjust behavior, you're causing the curse to land on you, but the person that cursed you also gets cursed. Because, you know, a curse without a cause cannot land. So if you accept the blockages and you don't speak out and pray about them, against them, you open the door for part of that curse to come upon you. Point number two is slander. Whoever speaks out false charges, discredits you, works um, with unjust charges or innuendos, condemns you for following Yeshua, they are all cursed. So what do we have here? You know, I hear a lot of whining, well, you didn't take my call or you weren't there for my call. Maybe I was in prayer. So soon as you have done that, you bring a curse on yourself from God. Okay? If you're taking away from my communication with God, you're not only putting a blockage, but as soon as you complain about it, you're putting an additional curse on it, on yourself. Sounds like you're the way to go. Three is to put debts or cause debt to come upon you. Now, these debts can be a marriage debt. You marry somebody that has a lot of debt and you don't find out till after. Or you get divorced and you end up with carrying a big debt because of the, of the marriage. It can be tax debts that you didn't know about. Death debts, where somebody died and you end up getting stuck with their bills. Or having to bury them because they didn't have any provision. Service debts. Credit card debts. Um, wealth taxes. And this hits, like, uh, in the state of Arizona. If a Canadian dies down there, they have a wealth tax that is applied and a death inheritance tax that's applied. So let's say you were worth a million dollars and you had it divided up among your family, you know, that they'd all get a certain portion. By the time the death taxes are paid and the wealth tax is paid, 70% is immediately gone on the wealth tax. And that's unjust. And that's if you die in Arizona. You might have been just visiting there for the day. And they have a legal claim against your wealth in Canada. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds unjust. Sounds very unjust. But, you see, it's a debt put upon you that is unjust. And if you look at Arizona... They're running out of water. What is water? Life. Life to the land, to the culture, everything. So they're being forced to now buy water at high prices because they have cursed the anointed of God. 
with unjust taxes. They pay a penalty. The water table has fallen from roughly 60 feet 100 years ago. You had to go down 60 feet to get the water table. You now have to go down over 450 feet to find the water table. And there's very little water there. Some of the wells, they're having to go down three, four, five thousand 5,000 feet because there's layers in which there's just really, really salty brine. And you can't drink salty brine water. Anyone notice that? It's no good for nothing. <coughs> Betrayal, number four. Wherever betrayal has come against you, whether a business partnership or broken vows, broken contracts, loans not repaid, uh, broken promises, and commitments left unfulfilled, all receive the curse from God. Yeah. Is there unjust? Yeah. Then you have point five is plunderers. Now, you see plunderers are thieves, extortionists, Lawsuits, fines, overcharging for services, or double billing. We also see saboteurs are involved here. When somebody sabotages your property, that's a pl plunderer doing so. When somebody steals your prayer time as a plunderer, your rest time as a plunderer of theft, anointing blockers and squanderers, people that come over, use your stuff, and abuse it and destroy it, and you know so that you've got to spend money replacing it. You realize they're all cursed by God? Six of those that seek to destroy you. Now, it could be words of discouragement, despair. You know, the, Despairing words wear you down fast. Words of doubt. Well, God's not going to do anything for you. You walk by so-and-so's house, that means you're guilty of something. God's going to get you for that. Unforgiveness are just words of unforgiveness are destroying words. Self destructive as well as destroying the party that you're not forgiving. Witchcraft and prayers of witchcraft. You also have wrong prayers. Wrong prayers are when you want to consume something against your lust or you want to consume a person over your lust. Different forms of abuse. Issuing hexes. Even such things as poisoning a person or po uh, Knowing something is not good to be eaten 
because it has so much chemical in it that, and you come and bring it for everybody to consume. Corrupted foods. Well, it just had a little bit of pork in it. It's brownies with just a little bit of doggy done in it. It adds to the flavor. You know. <coughs> Gives you a higher protein count in the food. Gifts of unclean or cursed material. And there's some people that will deliberately do that in order to try and destroy you to your want. The guy that got talked to by a jackass. Uh, Balaam? Balaam, yes. See, he was willing to destroy Israel for the sake of money. Some people See, they will take a bribe in order to lie about you and destroy you. And they're cursed by God. Gifts of, of these unclean materials have to be really examined what you, what you do with them. Some you don't bring into your home. Others you can take in and simply bind the demons and destroy them, to dispose of them when the person's not watching. Sexual abominations. Over indulgences and such. A person invites you out uh, to watch the game and then tries to get you drunk. Okay. They're getting you to overindulge in what you can't control. They're cursed. When you go to get somebody drunk, you're seducing them away from God. You're not trying to prosper them, you're trying to break them. Number seven is those who seek to persecute you. Any action that causes you to be in unforgiveness, anger, rage, uh, to lose your peace or joy or hope or desire for the work, anything that diverts you from the kingdom work is part of persecution. And they're cursed. <coughs> Sometimes there can be progressive demands put on you. And it makes you angry. Because you can feel that this is wrong. You may not know why. <coughs> And you get ang you know you have this anger rage over something and why is this happening? This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's still part of persecution. We had uh, for a while we were giving up food to the homeless and that here and uh, mustard seed and uh, hope mission would come down and pick up food at different days. And then we found out they were cursing us because we didn't deliver it to them. So we stopped picking it up and having it available for them. And then they cursed us some more. We had abandoned them. So, you know, there's other times 
people have uh, we've brought food in and uh, kept it frozen and it's been picked up. And uh, then they turn around and call the health department on us. And they couldn't figure out why we're not supplying food to them anymore. Why bother? Certainly they weren't moving in thankfulness. At least if it was, it was no way I could understand that kind of thankfulness. But it still comes under a persecution. And they suffer the consequences. Eight. When they seek to corrupt you, that's any action to seduce you into a lie. Sometimes it's offering a bribe, but most of all it's, they make a statement, and that statement may not be what you said, but they're trying to convince you that you've got to be in agreement with them. And when you're seduced into accepting that lie, uh, that brings a curse because it corrupts you. When people make false claims against you, well, you said this and you said that, and uh, you know, we had a person here that she strongly believed that we promised her that if she moved to Manitoba, we'd pay her move and buy her a farm and uh, a cattle and all this other stuff for that farm. We never made that promise. It's not in our commission organization to do that. So we wouldn't do it. But they thought for sure that the demon that they were listening to was assuring them that we had. When the person tries to get you to listen to gossip, you know they're corrupting you. You know, we're supposed to dwell on what's good and what's right not on how evil we can be in judging others. As I mentioned earlier, corruption is taking a bribe, upsetting the balances, upsetting justice for a bribe. Or if you alter God's word to justify a wrong action, or set of actions. When, especially within husband's wife, if uh, the husband says, oh, I'm the head of the house, you have to obey me. No. Only as far as their in obedience with God. Not when they're on their own tangent. You know, there's other things where people will quote the Bible uh, at uh, their mates or at their children. And it's done not out of love, it's done to justify their wrong actions. So that they don't get accused for what they're actually doing or have to take responsibility for what they're actually doing. They accuse someone else and they use the Bible to do it. And it backlashes on them very severely. Um, also, in corruption, is when you 
speak out a hostility to any race or color of people. Um, like for many years, the Baptists believed that um, those of the black color had no soul. Total lie. Because their body wouldn't function without a soul. And they knew it, but they still kept that lie spread. And the last of the churches that, not the churches that kept that policy, were consumed by the cancer that they caused. In vast dials, out of 300, you may have got 280 died within a year of cancer, stuff like that. <coughs> But they had their recompense for that false belief. And they were trying to quote it as though it was the word of God. It wasn't. Number nine is divertio. Now, a person can be diverting you by having false emergency claims. False needs. Uh, forcing you to look uh, for or at a false set of gods. Well, it's okay if you just come over for a Christmas dinner. We won't wish you Merry Christmas, but we're, you know, we got gifts for you anyway. They're trying to get you to worship a false god. Stand away from it. You not only bring a curse on them by doing so, by going, but you bring a curse upon yourself. Participating in pagan ceremonies. Um, also lustful ceremonies. Pagan feast days. Um, Relying um, on your self-strength. Well, you should be able to do that. You're strong enough. You should do, be able to do this. You should do that. But that doesn't mean God told you to do it. Or he wants you to be involved with it. Moving for self-protection to the hurt of another. and to justify bitterness or offense. If you're bitter and you're accusing somebody else for being the cause of your bitterness, you bring a curse. If you're taking offense at what they're doing and you haven't been praying and blessing them with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment, curse, you know, blessing them, then the curse that is coming on them is now coming on you also. <coughs> and number 10 is to rely on idleness, procrastination, or slumber for answers instead of Yeshua. Um, Teachers of no action also demean the thankfulness that they should have towards God. They, they discount walking in thankfulness. So we pray that this has an opening into your heart that you can see that when what it means to be cursed by the world or a person in the world or a person, a tear that has entered the congregation of God. They'll curse you. 
behind your back, whatever. There is a consequence. They pay a price. And it's not a good one. 